Let's assume that we're going to do two hypothesis tests, but in both cases, the truth, unknown to us, is that those null hypotheses are both actually true. Okay? So we're going to assume that in two different situations, they don't even have to be the same topic that we're researching. We, we don't even have to be thinking about the same researchers. Assume both nulls true. And we're going to talk about two different possible events. So let's say that A is the event that we reject the null for the first test. And let's say that B is the event that we reject the null for the second test. Okay. What we're interested in is the probability that if we conduct both of these tests, at least one of the two nulls will be rejected. In other words, we're interested in the probability that either A happens or B happens. If you haven't seen this notation before, this U stands for union and it means or. The way to think about it is that if we have an event A and an event B, if either one happens, we're talking about the union of those two circles, U for union, A or B. Why is this the quantity that we're interested in? Because if both nulls are true, then rejecting either one of them is a mistake. So here we're talking about the probability of making at least one mistake. The probability that either we make a mistake and reject A or we make a mistake and reject B. This is the probability that we want to calculate. What's the probability of A or B? Well, let's look at this picture again. The probability that either A happens or B happens is the probability of A plus the probability of B, but we're going to need one more thing, the probability of A plus the probability of B. But the problem is we've double counted this middle part because that's part of A and part of B. We've double counted the middle part. So the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. This symbol here stands for intersection and it refers to this overlapping part of the circles. Because this overlapping part is counted twice, if we add up the probability of A and the probability of B, if we subtract it, then we're going to end up with this union here. Okay. So now let's think of the particular context that we have. If the null is true for test one, what's the probability that we reject that null? That probability is equal to whatever cutoff we decided to use for our test. If we're going to use 0.05 as the cutoff for rejecting a null based on, or rejecting a null based on its p-value, then the probability that when this null is true, we'd reject it is 0.05. Right? The probability of A is equal to, for example, 0.05. Again, if that's the cutoff we're using for p-values in this particular test. All right. What about for B? If the null is true for the second test, the probability that we reject that null is equal to whatever cutoff we use. For example, 0.05. Okay. What is this equal to? The probability that we reject both nulls, even though both nulls are true? That depends on the correlation between the tests, and I haven't said anything about that. I don't know. Right? I don't know what this quantity is here. I don't know whether test one and test two are different tests conducted by different researchers in different contexts, or whether these two tests are highly correlated to each other because they're about the same data, just measured in a slightly different way. So I don't know what this quantity is. I haven't given enough information. However, the Bonferroni method is one particular way to deal with the fact that we don't know this correlation. What the Bonferroni method notices is that this quantity here that we can't identify exactly is a probability. And therefore, it has to be between 0 and 1. Most usefully, it has to be positive. What we've said here is that the probability of A or B is equal to 0.05 plus 0.05 minus some positive number. What that means is that if we omit this part over here that we don't actually know, what we can say is that this probability of A or B is less than or equal to 0.05 plus 0.05.
In other words, this quantity, 0.05 plus 0.05 minus some positive number, is smaller than 0.05 plus 0.05 without subtracting some positive number. Or if this number here is 0, it'll be equal. OK. 0.05 plus 0.05 obviously is equal to 2 times 0.05. Okay, so what we've said is if both nulls are true and we're rejecting with p-value cutoffs of 0.05, the probability of making at least one mistake, at least one false rejection, is less than or equal to 0.1, 2 times 0.05. That's the probability calculation that we've done. So how are we going to turn that into the Bonferroni method? How are we going to use this calculation that we've done here to come up with a plan? come up with a way to deal with the multiple comparison problem, a way to deal with the fact that if you conduct multiple tests, you're going to have a higher chance of making some mistakes. Suppose that our goal is for the probability of A or B, the probability of making at least one mistake, to be no bigger than 0.05. In other words, I want this quantity here to be capped at 0.05. I want to come up with a way to handle each of my tests such that the overall chance of making at least one mistake on any test is no bigger than 0.05. What can I do? 